Guys, what's going on? Zach here, Underground Strength Coach, Underground Strength Gym, UndergroundStrengthCert.com. So I posted like a little bit of a quote, even though I paraphrased it from a conversation on uh, Power Athlete Radio that um, John Wellborn and Coach Scott Caulfield did during Power Athlete Podcast. Let's get this sucker propped up here. And um, like everybody gets really sensitive to these things and there's always an excuse there's like oh it's a budget issue which we hear about this money thing all the time then we hear oh why wouldn't why isn't the math teacher qualified what if the math teacher lifts weights hey just because you're certified doesn't mean you're better hey now you're pushing a phys ed teacher out of the job why do we need to add more staff i think people want to just answer with more drama the bottom line is this you need a qualified person to work in the weight room. It's dangerous and it's uh, been proven to be life-threatening and to have serious injuries with an unqualified person in the weight room. We don't need to say, hey, what if the math teacher is qualified? Look, that's there's probably a lot of math teachers that have great strength and conditioning knowledge, but is that the norm? We're talking about norms. Then, of course, we're crying and complaining about budgets and then we have excuses for everything, and that's really the issue, is that if we're in the best interests of the kids, then we should be finding a qualified strength and performance coach. Now, there's a couple issues there. Um, administration doesn't really know who's highly qualified. You could have a lot of certifications and maybe be a great test taker, but not be good at coaching, not understand how to spot kids. You may not understand progressions and regressions. You may not understand what to do for the incoming freshmen or how to communicate with the middle school phys ed staff about, hey guys, let's put into play these specific exercises during warm-ups and like little circuits that you might do with your middle school students to help prepare them for the rigors of high school sports and also for middle school sports. So look, the bottom line is this. I shared that, that um, paraphrased quote because it just makes sense, right? Like the, the, and by the way, it said something to the effect of this. If you were to put a swimming pool, you know, on a high school, you know, in, in a high school property, so what, what would you do? Would you not have a uh, lifeguard on staff? Of course you would have a lifeguard on staff. And same thing with a weight room. You've got to have somebody that's gone through some training, not through just, hey, I read some stuff or I know how to lift myself. I've said this many times before. I've had many interns who come through my gym who could, you know, bench press 300 pounds, who could squat heavy, deadlift heavy, but they don't know how to coach. They don't know how to communicate with kids. They don't even know how to safely spot an athlete. They don't know how to communicate with the athlete and say, hey guys, this program says five sets of five. Boom, that's it. Or this says five sets of five. Your first set is a warm up. Your second set is a medium set. Now on sets three, four, and five, those are our working sets. If you cannot get a rep on your own, then I want you to rack that weight for the bench press or the squat. I want you to rack it before you need somebody to spot you. If you feel you're gonna struggle or grind, you're gonna cut the set. And also guys, you may not be able to add weight every set. You might add weight on your third set and then you might have to stay there for the fourth set and you might even have to go lighter on the fifth set. Or you might hit your heaviest set on your fourth set and then I'm gonna have you drop 15 to 25% and do a technique set of five. So we're gonna be speaking to kind of the different experience levels of athletes or my freshmen, you guys are going to be doing the goblet squat. Those of you sophomores, juniors, seniors, you're going to be doing a back squat. I want you guys organized over there because you guys are five foot five through five foot eight. You're going to be squatting there. Anybody who's five nine and above, you're squatting on this rack. And now we've got the same adjustments. We're organizing by height level. We've got the inexperienced guys going on goblet squats, the experienced athletes going on back squats, but everybody's squatting, I'm coaching, and they're hearing me give coaching cues. But as you could see, you are a conductor of an orchestra. Just looking at my desk, I've got books everywhere. And I, I, I say to myself, like, look, I mean, guys, 
how many books has the weight room supervisor read? How much knowledge is he or she soaking into their brain getting all of this information going? And not only is it information, it is the application and the experience. And yeah, sure, we could say it's a money issue, but it's not. There's grants, there's state grants, there's government grants, there's fundraising through the Booster Club, there's fundraising through the PTO, and there are qualified strength coaches all around that are just dying to help the local high school, but they are totally ignored and turned down. So we're not trying to argue and say, hey, what if the math teacher is this? Hey, this could be that. Yes, there's a million if, ands, or buts. But the one thing that is crucial is kids deserve and they need for safety and legal issues and the, you know, the proven negative experiences that have happened with inexperienced coaches. We need qualified strength coaches in these weight rooms. Now, yes, the colleges should incorporate strength and conditioning, but the colleges may not have, you know, if it's a division three university, they may not have a professor that really understands strength and conditioning that teaches you how to to uh, be a weight room supervisor or a strength and conditioning coach. You know, it's a lot more complicated than people think and it's because they don't understand how simple it can be. And I know that sounds ironic, but what happens is when you've been coaching for a long time, you have a lot of understanding of what athletes need according to chronological age, biological age, training age slash experience, in season, off season, preseason, postseason, and you're able to assess them from the moment they walk in, you're assessing them verbally, non-verbally. If that just made your brain explode and you said, F this guy, we're just gonna bench, squat, and clean, then you're doing it wrong. It's a, there's a lot more to it, and not everybody is physically, let alone mentally slash psychologically prepared for grinding out a back squat, for keeping their back flat on a power clean or hang clean. Um, not everybody's ready for a power clean. They might have to start with the hang clean. Not everybody's ready to bench press. Not everybody should bench press. There's a lot, guys, there's a lot of things, okay? There's a, there's a lot to it. Bottom line is, you could argue with me all day. The kids deserve it. They need it. It's for the safety of the kids. Come up with all the different excuses that you want, but this is what's needed in the schools. The money is there, but I guarantee you that the local strength coach that has offered to volunteer his services or even get paid a little bit is being completely ignored. There's far and few between great strength coaches who live in Smithville, whatever state, that are right near the school or near the high school. They've been ignored and turned down. Good help is being turned away. That means mediocrity is, is uh, being accepted and excellence is being rejected. It's not about the money, guys. These kids deserve it. That's it.